Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you guys how I turn one-handed. Before I get into the actual turning, um, I'd like to put out some information. The first is that the style has a name, it's called the Japanese style. I do some turns that aren't included in the Japanese style and I'll explain those as well. The second thing is that I will be using my left hand in the tutorial because I'm a left-handed solver and it's comfortable for me. If you are a right-handed solver, no worries, just mirror what I do with my left hand to your right hand. So for example, if I do a U prime, it's the equivalent of doing a U with your right hand. So it's very easy to follow along even if you're right-handed. Just uh, do a little mirroring and we'll be all good. So to get started, I uh, hold the cube with three fingers, my thumb, my middle finger, and my ring finger. My thumb is held at a slant on this 2x2 two two square that I'm pointing to right here. And I personally have my ring finger here on this sticker and my middle finger on this sticker, like this. I realize that it's a bit personal because everyone will have different cubes and different hands, but that's just how I stand. The important thing is to not obstruct this layer or this layer because these two are the layers that you'll be turning the most. So to get started in turning, um, the first turn I recommend trying is U prime because it's very similar to doing a U prime with both your hands. Um, if you were to solve two-handed, I'm sure U prime will look like something like this. It's really the same thing one-handed. I am taking this sticker here and pushing it. Like that. Despite the ease of doing U prime, going the other way, which is U, is much more difficult. Uh, especially when you're a beginner and you're first learning how to turn, it's a bit strange. Um, what I do is I put my finger on this sticker here, the tip of my index finger, and I pull the layer back like this. So the motion looks like this. So if I did U prime and U together, it would look like this. Something like that. Another way to do U is pushing this sticker back like this. Um, this style is uh, not included in the Japanese style, this way to do U, but I highly recommend it. In fact, I recommend learning both this and this because the more flexibility you have with turning or the more ways you know how to turn, the more algorithms you're able to use and the more flexibility you have when you solve. So oftentimes people I find if they only know how to do this, they can't use algorithms that make heavy use of U-turns like this. And I feel sometimes they're missing out. So if you're just beginning one-handed or if you know, you're know you into trying new things, I highly suggest learning both this and this. It'll definitely pay off. As for R, I do my R turn with my pinky like this. This is very basic, and a lot of people do this. I'm just pushing the layer up like this. R prime is also one of the trickier turns. It's very similar to you in the sense that I am pulling my finger down like this. Like that. So if I were to do R and R prime together, it would look like this. Okay, now on to double turns. Um, double turns are sometimes frequent in solves, and there are two ways to handle double turns. Um, the one is the use of a trigger, and the other is to treat the double turn as if it was two separate single turns. So to go over the trigger, um, for U2, it looks like this. First, index, then middle. This looks cool and it's really fast, but the issue is once I do this, I'm out of position. So I wouldn't recommend doing this unless you knew that you wouldn't be turning immediately afterwards. Like for example, if you were going to rotate or if U2 was the last move of your solve. Otherwise I would just do U2 like U prime U prime. 
It's um, It doesn't look pretty, but it's very effective and it'll get the job done. Similarly, R2 uh, can be done using pinky and then ring like this. But you can also do RR. RR also works. Um, I find in terms of regripping, you know how I said U2 has a positioning issue? R2 also has a positioning issue, but it's not as bad as U2. So um, if I were to pick a trigger, it would be R2 in terms of ease and, you know, ease of recovering from making the move. So both triggers are a bit, you know, awkward for positioning, but R2 is a little bit easier in my opinion. Um, as for other faces, if I want to access the L face, I will simply rotate the cube and this becomes my U face. Same with B. There's really no reasonable way I can get at the B face from how I hold the puzzle, but that's okay. Because if I do a rotation, I can easily access the B face as if it was my U face. Um, for D, I will lift my hand up and I will use my pinky to control the D layer. and if I am making many, many D layers in a sequence of moves, I'll simply rotate and it'll become R. F uh, follows the same logic. I've seen people, however, do F like this. Um, I personally can do this, but it requires me to change my grip entirely, and I don't really think it's worth it. So most of the time I'll rotate, say if I want uh, F as R, I'll just do this rotation, and F will be like R, and I can also rotate like this, and it becomes U. Just uh, be adaptable when you rotate, and um, well, make sure you're not rotating too much. Just um, yeah, stick to R and U, and um, in the case of a rare F, just be smart with the rotation. Uh, slice moves, uh, small U prime works the same way as U prime. Instead of grabbing this sticker, I'm grabbing the sticker below it, which effectively makes me do small u prime. And small u works the same way. Instead of grabbing this sticker up here, I grab the sticker under it, like this. Small r, I do with my ring finger. Small r is kind of rare for me, but if I ever get it, or if I ever need to do it, I will do it with my ring finger. And the same follows with small r prime. I will use my ring finger to pull like that. Uh, again, small r prime is kind of rare, um, but that is what I'll do if I ever encounter it. Um, so that pretty much wraps up my turning style. It's very simple because I use one finger to control each layer, and it contrasts with, say, using two fingers to control one layer, which I find overly complicated and not necessary. Um, however, you know, despite me thinking this is unnecessary, some people do do it and it works for them. The idea is to pick a turning style that suits your needs. This turning style just happens to suit mine. It is definitely not the only way to turn, but I definitely like it and I really recommend that you give it a try. If you have any questions, just comment below and I will answer it, or if not, then someone else who has experience turning one-handed will come talk to you. Thanks for watching.